Hey guys, it's Kate. I wanted to do a bit of a Christmas card slash rich watercolor with some nice deep reds and purples. So I sat down with my Meiliang palette and I'll be working with just two watercolors today and that is the purple and magenta. And I'm working very wet in wet with my quill brush. So I sprayed both sides of my paper and I'm going to alternate straight from the pan the two colors of watercolor. Just going wherever my brush wants to on the paper. But I want to get it on there fairly quickly so that the colors can kind of blend and flow together. And so you can see I'm just going on some different little areas but not paying too much attention where I'm going and filling in any gaps that are left behind with the magenta. And I'll be coming in with a second coat, but I want to get a nice good coverage on this. And I just love these watercolors. They go together so nicely and this brings me those um, those like galaxy watercolor vibes <laughs> and these brushes hold a ton of water I'm just blotting a little bit after I dip my brush but I could probably watercolor for a long time without rinsing I only am to switch colors And as it dries, the colors will spread even more. And I'm alternating the values a little bit, having some darker and lighter areas, just to give it some extra interest. And then we'll pretty much be good to go. And then any extra water, I'm just getting up with my brush and blotting it off to the side. It's pretty wet, but I don't want there to be any actual puddles which might affect the drying. And then once it's dry, you can see the, the different little marks. And I zoomed in a bit so you can kind of see what I'm doing here. So I grabbed my smaller round brush and I'm going in straight from the pan with the same two colors again. But I'm making these sort of little cloud shapes, I guess you could say. And then one of my favorite techniques is I'm going to be dragging it out. So I just dip the brush in the water and blot it a bit and then drag it along the bottom to really soften that edge. So I only have a hard top edge. And the dark color against that background, I loved it. It just really makes it so much more rich looking. And I'm just kind of letting the brush go where it wants me to. And you can see um, with the transparency of the watercolor, you can still see some of that bottom layer coming through, which I really liked. And I'm very excited because I'm going to be playing with my gold ink today, too. <laughs> and it's just perfect for Christmas, I think. I mean, you could just do this in an art journal page or anything like that, but it would also make a really good card. So if you wanted to do it on a piece of watercolor paper like this, you could attach it to another card or cardstock. Since it's so wet, I probably wouldn't do it on an actual card because it will kind of flow around the edges unless you taped it off and just wanted to do a framed piece. And that might work. And 
And it's such a relaxing process, just watching the watercolor flow and moving the brush along the page. That's one of my favorite things about watercolor. For those of you who do watercolor, what is your favorite thing? You could almost put on some music and just sort of take the slow strokes. <laughs> And if you're doing paintings and you're wondering, you know, if it might be good to do a second layer, I definitely say go for it. It just adds that a little bit extra. Watercolor is so transparent. And if you really want to get that dark, rich color, just let it dry and go over it again. And you can make some really neat effects with that. Now at the bottom there, I had um, put that one into a, a little bit of damp paper where I had dragged the red across. So I'm just going over that again a little bit to get that edge hardened up. I still can't believe Christmas is so close. It's just weeks away, and it seemed like yesterday we were just finishing up with Thanksgiving. <laughs> I just, can you believe 2024 is coming right around the corner? <laughs> so I grabbed my French curve to play around with, and it just has, well, those nice curves because of the tool so I brought it out and I'm just going around with my pencil to put in some lines um, just where I think that they look good I kind of moved it around and and looked before I traced but I wanted to get my lines down before going over it with ink and then I also found one of my stencils And so I put that joy on there. So now I'm going over it with my ink carefully on the lines with my fine brush. And there's probably a lot of different ways you could do this. And you could use pen or marker if you wanted to. Um, for this, I really wanted to use my ink. And I love that gold color. It's so opaque. And it just shows up on everything. So I had it in this little bottle with a spout. And so I took a little of it and put it in just a small little glass bottle with a lid. It's It holds like a quarter ounce or something like that. It's really small, maybe one ounce. And I'm going over some of the line thicker. That way it really shows. And it's like watching it come alive. <laughs> and I love that it's on this red and purple background. It's nice and dark with that joy over it and the gold. And it really is a pretty quick little card. Minus drying time, it doesn't take long to do at all. 
And it's kind of a, almost a Zen process, just doing the lines carefully. But it would go even faster if you're working with a brush. And just use anything you have on hand. I have some gold watercolors that I keep meaning to use more because I love the metallics. I just need to have an excuse to use them. <laughs> And that pretty much does it. And doesn't that look so nice and sparkly? You can see it in the reflection. But I hope you try this with the supplies you have on hand. And until next time, keep creating.